Hi guys, welcome to Snake Nook. I'm Vanny and with me I have my pastel and cheap firestorm. She's my royal python or ball python and she's helping me out with the intro of today's video. The reason why I didn't have a firestorm in an intro previous to this video is because she's a bit moody or a little temperamental at times and flinchy. Even though I've had her since she was little, that's just who she is. That's her personality. Uh, even though she does get handled regularly, she's still a little bit on the defensive at times, so I have to be cautious. The topic of today's video is snake intelligence in general. And here at Snake Nook, it's gonna be a weighty matter with my royals. Stay tuned. So while we discuss some points um, on snake intelligence, we are gonna be looking at some footage that has Dipper, our banana royal python, and also Summer, our spider royal python. They are getting some much needed sun on their beautiful scales. They're getting some exercise. You will see the difference between these two sub-adult males. Uh, Dipper's older, he's an older sub-adult male, and Summer is a younger sub-adult male, but you will see their personalities here that they are quite different. So while we're looking at these two guys hanging out on the tree, so on the matter of snake intelligence, the first point that I want to make is that snakes are survival specialists. While snakes heavily rely on instincts to keep them alive, they also do a lot of thinking. There is a lot of brain activity going on when a snake is out there trying to survive, trying to secure a meal, when they are learning about the world around them using their senses like their tongues to pick up chemical cues and their eyes picking up visual cues. So using both their sense of sight and their sense of smell, snakes know, for example, if they come up to a frog that is uh, colorful, like a bright green frog or a uh, bright red or bright blue or bright yellow or something like that, one of those poisonous frogs, they will avoid them because they know that it is not a prey that they can consume or they will die. So they are highly intelligent animals that are actually figuring out, okay, this one I cannot eat. I'm going to keep hunting for a different meal. So think about captivity, uh, like snakes in captivity, guys. I find it very strange that people are amazed that snakes can solve puzzles like foraging type puzzles to attain a food reward or that they can follow a colorful target to attain a food reward and there's nothing wrong with those practices they actually come in very handy depending on your approach to snake keeping however my, the point that i'm trying to make is that sometimes people are highly amazed that snakes can do these things but if you observe some of their behavior uh, in documentaries or if you're able to go out into the wild but you're able to see the behavior of wild snakes you will see that they can do all of these things and a whole lot more because when they live out there in the wild there is a another level of rigor uh, that that they have to get to and master if they want to stay alive so them just being able to find food items that you hide for them I, that's quite easy that's not at all challenging for them they are very very intelligent they can certainly go a lot further than that let me make another point here real quick so let me just tell you something i saw in a snake documentary so in this documentary, a venomous snake, and I completely forgot, I forgot the species of snake that it was, but it was a venomous one, and this the snake ambushed um, a rodent type of prey, and what it did was that it envenomated the prey, of course, using its fangs, but what I found very interesting was that the mouse did not die instantly, or the rodent. Um, what happened was that the snake was able to gauge how much venom it injected into that particular prey item. And so it was really initially just slowing down the prey. Of course, it would eventually immobilize it completely and kill it. But there would be a few minutes between the time that the rodent was envenomated to the time that the rodent actually stopped 
living. And during those few minutes, the rodent was able to get away. Um, and this was through like foresty type terrain. So the rodent went under things, over things, through things to try to hide while it was still moving. Then the snake, uh, you know, the snake is patient. The, the snake was patient, waited a little bit before it began the hunt. So then, the, then it started uh, going and looking for this rodent going through very interesting terrain to get to where the rodent was. So how intelligent was this snake that it knew how much venom to inject into the rodent in order not to waste any venom because venom is precious to venomous snakes. So it didn't give it um, an immediately lethal dose right there. And interestingly enough, it it gave the snake some time to hunt and find the rodent. So I find that very interesting. I'm gonna circle back to the colors. I was telling you about the frogs, the colorful frogs, how snakes avoid colorful frogs but can be trained to follow colorful targets. So what does that tell you? In the wild, they will avoid colors like that, like blue, green, those bright colors. But in captivity, they can follow them to earn a food reward. So think about that think about it how much intelligence is actually going on for them to be able to know that if they're in the wild those colors mean watch out get away don't follow but in captivity the, it those colors can be paired up with a food reward to mean something positive so a lot of intelligence going on there I'm gonna tie an anecdote here to this particular point that I was making. So regarding my young jungle carpet python torrent. So torrent used to hide under the substrate, under the newspaper for the longest time before he actually started venturing more comfortably onto the purchase and binds of his enclosure. When he finally did, then what he started doing when it was feeding time, he would go into his into his warm hide and then it was just feeding time and i happened to be feeding him a couple times when he was in that hide and strangely enough well rather interestingly enough whenever he wanted to eat i noticed that he started going into his warm hide so when i was defrosting rodents he knew to go into his warm hide and, and wait for the rodent so he kind of was using that cue to communicate with me so he went above and beyond just like form you know some type of formal training he was this is something he came up with he came up with that himself in order to communicate to me that he wanted to eat and to this day he still does it occasionally he'll go into his warm hide and he normally doesn't spend a whole lot of time on there guys he does once in a while but it's the way he positions himself with his face just sticking out just enough so there is a difference when he's resting in there and when he's actually waiting for food i'm going to put a picture of him right there but that just shows how intelligent he is so he was communicating with me with certain actions so certainly very intelligent in conclusion guys snakes do function on instincts but that's not all that they function on they do use their brain activity in order to figure things out because if snakes were only acting on instincts how do you explain that some snakes will follow blue or green targets to get a food reward and also guys they do use their body language to communicate with us but sometimes as keepers we don't pick up on those cues because they are very subtle so I hope that you guys have enjoyed this portion of the video where I've been talking about snake intelligence. Um, I didn't get to talk about everything that I was thinking about, that I've been reading about, that I've come across, but I hope that this helps you to see them in a different light. And now we're going to move on to the weighty matter here at Snake Nook. This is Firestorm. We're going to weigh her. She is a young subadult ball python. She is about a year and a half old or so, something like that. Let's see how much she weighs. She has never fasted. She has never skipped any meals and she is about a year and a half old she is at 911 grams wow she's doing really really well oh no she's really close to the dreaded thousand gram wall 
Okay, let's see. Now here we have Winter. Winter is about a year old. She just turned a year old recently. And uh, she's never fasted either. 547 grams. Oh, by the way, when I say they had never fasted, that does not include when they're shedding. 547 grams for my yearling female white wedding. Okay, Winter. Okay, let's, let's get you. One last weight check. This is Tempest. He is a recently turned adult royal python who has on occasion uh, fasted for short periods of time and he is at 882 grams. Good job, Tempe. Thank you so much for staying with us, guys. I hope you liked the video. Y'all have a good one. Bye.